Binge the full week of The Ray Taylor Show ad-free over at InspiredDisorder.com slash plus. This is The Ray Taylor Show. Ray's Days, episode 195. This is a weekly diary podcast hosted by me, Ray Taylor. Every Saturday, I share updates on my journey as an artist, podcaster, business owner, and human being. I'm excited to share my experience with you and hope that my journey can serve as a source of inspiration and positivity for you. On this episode, I am talking about some Inspired Disorder updates as far as the business. I'm also talking about some new tools that I'm using for the Ray Taylor Show and the production of the Ray Taylor Show. Uh, possible also talking about some possible new uh, a possible new show coming to the Ray Taylor show uh, so look out for that potentially also talking about the TikTok TikTok shop that is now open uh, the inspired disorder TikTok shop at inspired disorder on TikTok now open I'm also talking about other updates that I've made to the many faces in general, as well as new Inspired Disorder Plus benefits that are available for members of Inspired Disorder Plus. I'm also talking about what I've been watching this past week. I am also have some updates on my health and my fitness journey that I've been on. And as always, at the end of every episode of Ray's Days, I will be talking about something that I am thankful for. We will get back to the show after this short message. Are you a true fan of The Ray Taylor Show? Do you crave more content, more insight, more of everything that makes this show great? Then Inspired Disorder Plus is exactly what you need. For only $5 a month, transform your listening and viewing experience into something extraordinary. No more waiting, no more ads. Enjoy the full week of episodes of The Ray Taylor Show in both audio and video formats, completely ad-free. But that's just the beginning. You'll get access to early access to the Many Faces series, dive into extensive live painting archives. You also get to enjoy deals and discounts only available to our members. The perks don't just stop there. Delve into the expansive back catalog of over 14 shows with 618 episodes. Get personal with Ray Taylor through his blog, through my blog. Expand your horizons with my creative writing section and participate in the AMA sessions where your questions bring to life our community. Ready to step up your game? Visit inspireddisorder.com slash plus and join our exclusive club. It's not just content. It's an experience. See you on the plus side. Now let's get back to the show. So let's start it off with the business and then we'll get to the personal. Let's The business, I've been organizing like crazy not only just in my physical meat body life but in uh the digital life as well um kind of like in many ways also kind of restructuring how i organize the many faces in general i'm also organizing everything uh behind the scenes on my website uh, just really in this big overhaul on my website and what I'm doing with the many faces. Also rearranging things and organizing things to make them work more efficiently, make more sense, I guess, structurally make more sense for my website, which has tons of content on it. Inspireddisorder.com. You'd be surprised how thousands of podcast episodes and thousands of paintings could lead to a lot of work on how to organize and uh, keep things uh, neat and tidy and uh, really building systems that work. Um, I've also been organizing my space in the world a lot, my living space a lot, getting rid of everything that I don't use or need. Like if, if I have stuff that has been unused for the last year, I will not 
I will not have it in my space. I may put it in storage if it's something that I may need in the future. But as far as my space, my living space, I want to be only surrounded by things that I use regularly. Uh, I want the least amount of clutter in my life and things in my life. So I've been kind of, in many ways, I guess, doing some early spring cleaning in the winter that is 2024. Um, you know, just making sure I the tools that I use regularly are free from any clutter is the main goal. So doing a lot of organization in general, a lot of behind-the-scenes structural stuff. Uh, but just really trying to start off the new year fresh. N all of the baggage has been packed away and put away. All of the clutter is gone. And really just starting off clean and fresh and ready to go this for this year. Uh, as far as updates for the Ray Taylor show, what I've been using, the new tool that I've been using. I started, you. I mean, I've been using AI to help write some of my scripts, mainly to do the tags and descriptions and things like that for YouTube, but also I have it do certain things like the intro uh, to top five, that long intro where I'm talking about the topic that the episode is about that is written by AI, and then the descriptions of each movie are written by AI as well, just giving the the basics, the plot breakdown, the the uh, overall uh, reception of each movie, things like that, really just basic stuff. Um, so I've been using AI for a lot of things, ChatGPT per specifically, but I've recently started using this AI called Opus Clip to edit out clips of the show, which is something that I've done manually for probably the last year. I don't know exactly when I started editing clips uh, from each show. I used to do three clips per episode. And uh, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. It's my least favorite thing to do. Uh, in the work, all of the different kinds of work that I do to prepare for this show, to produce this show, to produce my artwork, uh, to do all of the other things that I do creatively... Editing clips from this show is my least favorite thing to do. And takes doesn't take the most amount of time, but it takes a good amount of time. So using this thing, Opus Clip, which I did a test run on just to see. I uploaded uh, one episode just to see what clips it would give me. And it was interesting. It was interesting what it did. They're not perfect, but for a what version one of this software this this ai that will pick out clips it does a job that is good enough where i am no longer going to do the manual stuff although i will there's a few episodes that i'll pick out specific clips for that i want um but for the most part uh this is way better basically how it works you sign up you pay i mean for the free trial you get it will process like 40 minutes of of uh footage or whatever for you um it's like just basically they give you enough to test it out to see if you like it and then you could pay for they have different packages and when you sign up you get a certain amount of hours of pro video processing uh, that they'll do, uh, which you can add more to if you need more. Uh, and what you do is you either give them a link to one of your YouTube videos, or if you still have the file, which I do, uh, you can upload the file. And then it processes the episode, and then it you can... In the processing, so once you upload the file, you can choose what portion of the video you want it to analyze, which will save you money, credits. You won't be using as many credits, which, because of my episodes, I want clips from any aspect of the episode. Maybe the first opening and end credits of each episode, I won't, but those are like maybe a minute uh, out of like episodes that are 30 to 60 minutes long. 
Uh, it's not really saving me a whole lot. So I just do the whole episode. It will also allow you to type in any keywords that you want the AI to look for. So if you want clips that are about certain topics, you can add in keywords. What I do, I upload the file. I don't do anything. I just like process the whole video. I want to see what you come up. You can also tell it to uh, what length clips you want. Uh, which I generally want less than a minute, but if there's longer clips, I'll take them. And most of the clips it comes up with is less than a minute anyway, so I don't put the uh, on that restriction either. I just let it process and come up with whatever it comes up with. Um, and then once it's done processing, it gives you a bunch of clips, like anywhere from like 15 to 20 clips to choose from. And each clip will have captions added onto it, which is another thing that's nice i don't have to do it manually on social media platforms it's just done when it edits stuff which i love that it allows you to edit your clips via text so it'll show you the transcript for the clip and if you want to cut out any of the ums or uhs or want to edit it in any way it's all based on the text which is a very interesting way to edit um and then it also allows you to schedule posts on your different social media platforms, which I haven't used yet. Um, there's also a feature for setting up templates, which I haven't used yet, but I will be using in the future, I'm sure. I uh, just didn't have enough time to experiment completely with it. Um, so I did the first experiment on an episode of Ray's Days from last week, uh, just to see what it got. And, um, and I liked it, you know. I'll get, and from what I found, I'm getting way more clips than I, I used to. Obviously, I used to do three clips a week. Now, like, whatever it spits out, I go through and I preview each one. And then you can go in and edit each one if you want. Um, but I go in and I listen to each, I watch each clip. I mark the clips that I like edit the clips that I like but need to be fixed. And then once I go through all of them, I will go through and then download all of the ones that I like, that I've completed, that I'm happy with. And, you know, I will get, I have gotten anywhere from like five to seven clips. So it's almost doubled my output. It's more than doubled my output as far as how many clips I get. And the clips that I've gotten have done really well. It also gives you a title and description, uh, which I haven't used those yet. I've used what I've been using. Um, and they've gotten some good... I've My views on clips have gone up since I started use, this past week. Uh, but we'll see how it goes. Obviously, as for, right now, I love it. Um, I just hope it eliminates my need to ever have to edit clips again. Uh, and frees up that time, which I appreciate because, I mean, it does take time because the upload takes time, the processing takes time, uh, going through and checking, reviewing the clips before I download and select which ones I want to use takes time, but it's far less time than it took before. While it's uploading and processing, I can literally be doing other things which is I, something I can't do when I'm editing clips manually. I can't even listen to podcasts or anything when I'm editing manually because I have to be focused on the edit. Um, so it frees up so much time, gives me so much more output. So I'm so far, I'm super stoked with this new service, this new tool. Um, and last week, it helped me out a lot. It's going to be interesting to see how it goes two weeks in a row, see if I can implement more of the features that are offered. So far, so good. I'm loving it. Uh, I'm also, as far as this show is concerned, considering potentially starting a new show as part of the Ray Taylor Show umbrella, the network of shows that is Ray Taylor Show. I have thought about doing a book club, the Ray Taylor Show book club, uh, in order to motivate me to read more books because I have a few books that I want to start reading uh, and I'd like to start reading again in general and 
I figure if I do a book club and I do want like an episode a month, I can, I should be able to read a full episode or read a full book in a month, especially if it's an audio book, uh, which some are, some aren't. Uh, but I'm considering it. I'm mulling it around. Uh, I'm thinking about it. So look forward to that if you are uh, interested in books or want to get started in reading books again. Uh, I already know a few books that I want. I plan to to read if I do turn this into a show. And also it may help me improve how I talk about films in general. So we'll see. Possibly coming up. We'll see. Uh, as far as the many faces, I opened up the TikTok shop. It is now live at Inspired Disorder on TikTok. You can now purchase my original paintings and limited signed prints. Currently, it will be the most recent 28 paintings that are part of the 2024 collection, which is the exact same 28 paintings that are available through my website uh, of the 2024 collection, which if you want more than 28, the most recent 28, the most recent four weeks, you can sign up for Inspired Disorder Plus and get access to every single painting ever made uh, in the in the Many Faces series. So that will be available so far. The first week and second week of this year are available on the TikTok shop. Uh, getting used to adding new products to the TikTok shop is has been you know a bit of a learning curve it takes time i'm hoping that in time i'll be able to make that process far more efficient um but so far so good it's getting good traction on tiktok i haven't sold anything but i can't see why not the paintings are super cheap the prints are even cheaper uh and I also like the TikTok shop has, I haven't set it up yet, but they have uh, basically like an affiliate situation built in to where you can allow people to sell your products through their accounts and get paid a commission. So I'm going to be setting that up in the future as well. I'm excited for that. But uh, TikTok shop is open. Uh, I am hopeful. I would love for the TikTok shop to blow up. I would love to sell out of everything. If I am able to sell everything through TikTok and my website is unused, I wouldn't care. I would love it. As long as I'm selling stuff, I, I love it. So we'll see how it all goes. Um, but it's new and I'm keeping up with it. So far, I've done two weeks of uh, getting the, the new work up on the TikTok shop. So it's it's running along not highly efficient yet but it's getting there also started painting live on wednesdays for the first time uh, it's felt great definitely enjoy having the my week kind of spread out a little bit more right um still getting used to the rest of my week having two days before i record and having that time whereas like friday uh, I spent watching movies like I'm still kind of feel behind. I haven't gotten completely used to it yet, but I do enjoy uh, painting on Wednesdays and then doing all the processing th of that on Thursdays. Really just relaxes my week a lot more than it was. Um, and I'm really happy with the paintings that uh, I've been making. I've been smoking weed while painting, which is something I haven't done for years uh, and smoking weed while not drinking at the same time. So it's just smoking weed. Uh, it really has made me relax and settle in and focus on my work in a way that uh, I, I didn't have before. So, so far, so good. I really enjoy that. Just kind of gets me in the zone, you know, gets me in the flow, which I appreciate that as well. As far as Inspired Disorder Plus, I mentioned it before. Uh, I'm doing a lot of changes to Inspired Disorder Plus. I'm going to be doing a refresh on that, just making sure everything is correct and up to date and just reevaluating the benefits people have for Inspired Disorder Plus. Uh, I'm starting, I don't, I'm, I'm trying to start blogging uh, about my, my fitness goals that I've had, fasting and diet and the tools that I'm using. 
which I mentioned in this uh, show as well, but I'm going to go in more detail uh, on my blog. So if you want the details of that, uh, you will get that as my in my blog. On uh, you, the first post is actually public, so if you want to check that out uh, on Inspire Disorder Plus. But uh, yeah, it's another benefit you'll get. Uh, but the big benefit, uh, new benefits for Inspire Disorder Plus uh, that the public doesn't have access to, uh, is in regards to the many faces. First off, you get access to the many faces early. So I paint Wednesday. Uh, they go live. They get uploaded and scheduled on Thursday. On Thursday, if you're an Inspired Disorder Plus member, you have access to those paintings immediately. You can buy any of the paintings that are not yet public before they go public. Um, and so that is one benefit, getting early access to paintings before they go public, early access to the 2024 collection before they go public. Uh, the new paintings that do go public will be public for four weeks, 28 days, and then they will be removed from the the public will no longer have access to them. And the only way to have access to them is if you are an Inspired Disorder Plus member. And that also will give you access to the complete Many Faces Classic Collection which is the collection of artwork that is anything from 2022 and before. So all of those, there are 28 paintings from those 2,000 that are available to the public. But the complete, the complete collection is only available to Inspired Disorder Plus members. And of course, whether it's the classic collection, the 2024 collection or the 2023 collection, which is available to the public, uh, members of Inspired Disorder Plus get uh, special pricing. They get a discount code, so you can save money. So there's a lot of benefits if you want to start collecting the many faces. You have access to the entire collection, all of the collections, as well as the discount code. Um, so a lot more value for Inspired Disorder Plus members. Um, but like I said, I do need to do a refresh on everything to make sure everything is still working uh, with my website as Inspired Disorder Plus is handled through Patreon, which is a great service that is set up for this kind of thing. Uh, but just making sure everything works well with my website, making sure my website is up to date, making sure the descriptions on everything are up to date, uh, all that stuff I need to do a refresh on. Uh, adding the new benefits and all that stuff, you know, little minor things, but uh, definitely in the works to try and make sure everything is ready to go. Let's take a brief interlude from our episode today. Hey, art aficionados and those who cherish a splash of creativity in their lives, I want to introduce you to something extraordinary. The Many Faces is a series that captured my heart, and I bet it will capture yours too. These aren't just paintings. They are stories told through the medium of ink on paper, each depicting an abstract, surreal face, which has its own unique essence. The artist, me, behind the series, pours my heart and soul into creating each new masterpiece every single day. And the best part, you can own one of these enchanting pieces with a price starting at just $20. That's for a 4 by 6 inch painting, and there's sizes and a story for everyone. Envision an original artwork from the many faces, bringing a touch of mystery and emotion to your own space. If this sparks your curiosity, don't hesitate. Explore the full collection over at InspiredDisorder.com and find the piece that resonates with you. Now, let's dive back into the heart of of our show so enough with all the business stuff let's get personal shall we uh with what starting off with what i've been watching i've been so busy working on getting everything updated like literally i've been so focused on updating my website updating all of that stuff restructuring everything uh, i really haven't had that much time to focus on any fun stuff uh i have been watching uh the movies for, of course, this week's review and the top fives. 
Uh, I did watch uh, a little of Wilfred this week, which I still haven't finished. I'm pretty close to ending. It's only two seasons. Um, and the second season, I love Wilfred. It gets really crazy in the second season. Uh, just a fun show. Kind of reminds me of Search Party in a lot of ways, which is another great show, uh, which maybe I'll have to rewatch that one too. Um, but... Uh, yeah, so I might rewatch that after watching finishing Wilfred. Although I did kind of start watching Community last night, so we'll see. I, you know, Community is another great show that I haven't watched in a while. So maybe I'll go Community and then I'll go back and rewatch Search Party. I don't know. I'm always just searching for new shows to have on in the background, stuff that I've already watched, reviewed on the show, but something that I can have on in the background while I work. Uh something that I don't need to pay attention to, but when I do look up, I can enjoy. Uh, I also started, quote unquote, reading Rick Rubin's book, The Creative Act, which is a book which might be the first book of the, the book club, potentially, if I decide to do it. Uh, it's an interesting book. I've seen so many clips of him on like Instagram and TikTok of like stuff that I relate to resonates with me 100 uh, percent. And it's a book of like meditations in a lot of ways meditations on art and creativity um it's it's a very interesting book uh and a lot of the stuff that i completely relate to and agree with uh although he relates everything in a very spiritual through a very spiritual lens like a very woo woo kind of a lens uh in order to explain everything um but the essence the granular nature of what he's talking about i agree i agree with um and there's like in between, I don't know if it's in between each chapter or what, there's like a sounding bowl. So it's, it has the the uh, the sound effects of like meditation almost between things. And then also his voice, Rick Rubin, is actually narrating it. It's, it's I don't know, the whole, the audio book is a great experience. I'm really enjoying it. Um, so, you know, his artistic theories that I've seen in so many social media clips was a big aspect of it and then also uh he's like my favorite producer of my favorite band uh red hot chili peppers whenever they do an album with rick rubin it's uh, one of my favorite albums um and he he's so good at getting great performances out of artists um and he's talked about that and his process is so similar to like my views of art and how i you know look at art and creating art and I, I love it i love it so i'm i'm super into his book for sure uh no dreams this week that uh really stood out or that i remembered um the my health and fitness journey as everybody knows i started off at 260 pounds my goal is to get down to 180 pounds as of my last weighing I was at 248 pounds, so I am down uh, 12 pounds, and uh, I've been sleeping good. I've had tons of energy during the day. I've been able to get so much work done on fasting days. I just, it is, it is easy to get stuff done. Uh, I also got myself a gallon water bottle, and uh fill it up in the morning and then like that is the water I need to drink for the day at least so at the end of every day I need to make sure that that giant gallon of water is empty uh and it's great the most hydrated I've ever been consistently in my life as well so far everything is working perfectly um and I use the water for like if I'm making tea you know pour the water from my gallon water bottle in there because it's water regardless um, yeah, so it's, it's working out perfectly, drinking tons of water, especially on the fasting days where it's like, I'm fasting for 40 hours. So like drinking water helps me not feel hungry. Uh, it could definitely make me feel full. Uh, but it's also something that's super necessary for your body during those fasting days in order to help the processes that are happening within your body. So I feel a lot better. Um, I feel a lot thinner, despite the fact that there hasn't been any changes in my measurements. 
uh, at least so far. I'm interested tomorrow I measure myself and weigh myself. So we'll see if uh, I assume I have to still be losing weight. And I'm I'm hopeful that the measurements start to reflect that as well. Um, you know, uh, I in my meals that I've been getting through my meal prep thing, I got a salad as one of my meals, which was one of the most delicious salads I've ever had. Uh, but just trying to select healthier options. But this salad was ridiculously good. It had spinach, apple, sweet potato, cranberries, uh, these crispy onions, Monterey Jack cheese, uh, sliced scallions. It was absolutely delicious. The dressing was uh, amazing as well. It was a mixture of honey Dijon and sour cream with a little bit of water to kind of thin it out. So good. Uh and I had just gotten two giant like bowls, these food storage bowls, one of which I had gotten specifically for fruit because I cut up a pineapple, a melon, and then I put blueberries in there for me to like snack on, to have as dessert, uh, just something if I need something sweet. It's a very healthy, sweet alternative. Um, so one of those bowls is for the fruit. And then the other one is perfect for salads, whether it's this salad that I got for uh, dinner through my meal prep kit or just I want to start eating more salads in general just to fill up on, um, in a sense. So I've gotten use out of those giant bowls already. Um, and I'm loving the schedule that I've had the past two weeks. I, I do have a one tweak, but the the idea of this fasting schedule is... Uh, five days a week, I can eat from noon to eight, right? So at noon, my fast ends, and then I can eat all the way up until 8 p.m., and then I stop eating until the next day at noon. Two days of the week are no eating at all. So there's two days that are 40-hour fasts. And right now, I did the, those two days were Tuesday and Friday, I think. And those are great. What I want to do is switch those. Yeah, Tuesday and Friday are my fasting days, which I get a lot done on those days. But what I want to change them to is Wednesday and Sunday, I think, which are the no Thursday and Sunday, because those are the days where I'm working on my computer processing Thursday and processing all of the artwork I did and the making of videos. And then Sundays like the, today are the day I produce my show. And those are days where it's like, I'm working basically all day. I wake up, I start working and by nighttime, whenever I'm done, it's nighttime. And then I go lay down. So it's, those are the days where I'm most likely to not cook a meal because of the time it takes and we'll either go for an easy option that's like in my freezer or I will order takeout, which I'm trying to eliminate both of those. So what I'm probably going to do next week, I start a new fasting schedule. I'm going to do the same type of schedule where it's five days of eating, five days of noon to eight and then two days of no eating. But the two days of no eating are going to be Wednesday or Thursday and Sunday. Um, and I think that's going to fit perfectly fit perfectly in my in my uh schedule so that monday when monday comes around at noon on monday it's gonna taste so good the food's gonna taste amazing um and same thing friday uh just mondays and fridays are kind of going to be the settling back into enjoying uh some really good food so minor changes and i'm loving that schedule so far this past like the two fasting days I had where I didn't eat anything at all were so much easier than previous week. Not that they were that hard the previous week, but they keep getting easier. These fat, like I'm getting used to fasting uh, at these schedules more and more. So I'm stoked. Everything's going well. Um, and also my mental health has been pretty good. Haven't had any issues one way or the other not manic not depressed not angry or on edge or not even really stressed out right now because 
I mean, the the only thing stressing me out would be the whole car thing. And I don't know. I'm just like, eh, it, it is what it is. If like I want to get one now, but if I have to wait, like, I don't know. It's just it's I'm it, it's not a big deal for me. Uh, but as I like to do at the end of every episode of Race Days, I want to highlight something that I'm thankful for. So this week, I am thankful for something that's kind of small and something that I may have mentioned before. At some point, I need to keep track of these. But this week, I'm thankful for the smell of winter, right? Where the air is crisp and cold. You know, maybe it's the smell of people uh, having fires going, Um and the colder temperature makes the air different in some way. Uh, so maybe it's the smell of the burning wood. But I think the temperature also has something to do. It really, really kind of enhances the crisp, crispness of the air. But I love the smell uh, along with the cold, crisp air. And I get it in the desert. Not sure if it was the same. I did love the crisp air in Denver, and wintertime in Denver is is a unique experience in and of itself. Uh, but specifically in the desert, which maybe it's also a smell that I just, it's a nostalgic thing, brings me back to growing up out here. It's just so light and refreshing. It's one of those smells that taps into those core memories of some some kind. And specifically, it makes me it made me think of growing up uh, out here playing basketball inside the garage when I was still young. I don't think I had gotten a basketball hoop outside of the garage yet, so I was using a what used to be a basketball hamper that was mounted in the garage. Me and my friend would play two on two basketball against imaginary players. Meanwhile. We would be listening to Adam Sandler CDs in the background, maybe even Weird Al CDs. But I remember specifically we had a space heater in the garage because, you know, despite what you may think, it does get kind of cold in the desert uh, during wintertime. It could get down to like 40 degrees, uh, which is pretty chilly. I remember those times. They were so much fun. And uh, I don't know. I also prefer it to everything that is summer out here so just getting the the feel and the smell that it is 100 percent winter time the old it's not like you can look outside and see snow on the ground you see snow up in the mountains that surround us in the valley but you know that crisp air and the smell it just it it it's like i know that it's winter time and i appreciate it so that's what i am thankful for this week uh the smell of winter in the desert Uh, As far as upcoming events, every Wednesday I paint live on YouTube at 420 Pacific Time. Uh, So go to inspireddisorder.com or uh, youtube.com slash inspireddisorder to watch that. I'm also working on having that uh, streamed to multiple locations soon. So look forward to that every Wednesday at 420. From now until January 27th, there is the Desert Views exhibition that is going on at the La Quinta Museum, which I am a part of. There will be this week, maybe after, actually, um, as this episode comes out, it may actually be too late. January 20th is the artist reception for the Desert Views exhibit. Uh, so that may or may not even be, that may be too late. I think uh, that's already happened. Or it's happening today. I don't know exactly when the 20th is, Uh, but you can go to inspireddisorder.com slash events for all the details on all of my upcoming live and local events. Don't have anything booked locally for pop-up shows yet, but uh, got my eyes and ears open. Uh, You never know. But either way, I'm very thankful for all of you uh, tuning in, for the opportunity to connect with all of you through this podcast, and for the chance to share my journey with you. Please join the conversation by leaving a comment or rating on your favorite podcast platform, or of course, over at youtube.com slash inspired disorder, where everything's available in video form. I want to thank everybody for tuning into this episode, and I'll see you again next Saturday for another episode of Raise Days. Subscribe to The Ray Taylor Show on YouTube and everywhere podcasts are found. Binge the full week ad-free over at inspireddisorder.com slash plus. 
purchase Ray Taylor Show merch over at InspiredDisorder.com. Have a wonderful day, everybody. Peace out. Today is the day where you wake up and you realize that everything that you've been dreaming about, everything that you've been wanting, every goal and wish and hope that you've ever had can become real. Dreams can come true. What you manifest in your mind, you can